winning contracts using your website. What is that all about, Mr. Brian? We are uh, all here for you and, and all ears and can't wait to hear what you have to say. Awesome. Well, greetings, everybody. I'm in, <clears throat> I'm in gorgeous Houston, Texas today, or a suburb of Houston. We're about like in the mid-70s, so I don't think we're going to have any like issues with clouds coming up or a storm that'll affect my Wi-Fi. So um, we're going to use the uh, chat for any questions that you have. Once I'm finished with the presentation, well, be glad to answer any questions you have about your website or online. And then I'm going to share the screen and get started. And uh, what I did, I just, I, I was telling um, um, some people, I, I redid this presentation this morning so that basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, um, I'm going to cut some of the websites that I've done for my clients in pieces and show you strategically why it's done that way. And then what you could possibly do is take some of this information back and take a look at your website and say, hey, are we strategically trying to reach the people that we want to reach? So let's do a share screen and we'll get started. Okay, everybody seeing the first slide okay? Awesome. Okay. So what I basically call this is how can your website help you close more sales? Because that's pretty much what I do. Um, the tagline of my business is websites that make your phone ring because we want action anytime somebody comes to the site. And that action may be, I'm not on the right site. This is not for me at the right time. Or yes, I want to do business with this company. So I'm going to take you through exactly how I look at it strategically for a website. So my name is Brian Bearden and I, I'm the CEO of Upstream Marketing. A little bit about me real quick. Um, no, I mean, not moving. Uh, uh, you can see me with my B50 hat on. Um, every weekend that I can, I try to fish. Um, and I don't own a boat. So that's the reason why you see me in the back of the boat. I'm actually called a co-angler. So I'll fish and pay gas if anybody calls me because uh, I don't want the expense and, and to own a boat because I'm the only one in my family who really enjoys fishing. Um, the next thing is if you follow me on Facebook, you'll see that I do a lot of cooking. So the picture in the middle is actually for uh, New Year's. We had steaks, but then also I have relatives that were always big about cooking black eyed peas for good luck. So we had black eyed peas. And then I had some German relatives who were really big about uh, you got to have cabbage for cash. So we had cabbage as well. Um, the other thing that I love to do is garden. And um, I say, you know, what's interesting about me that nobody knows? I'm a Harris County master gardener, which means I actually went pro in gardening, which means I took some classes at their horticultural school and passed. So now I'm a Harris County master gardener, which just means I know a little bit more about gardening than your average person. But up in the right hand corner are some lilies that I had to protect when we went to seven degrees a couple of weeks ago. But uh, my backyard is full of um, plants that always um, bloom. So that just kind of gives you an idea about who I am. Um, so I wasn't born with the internet. Uh, my background is actually with multi-location retail companies. I was Burger King's grand opening wizard, which means basically I did all their local marketing um, in the Southwest. So if they had a store that was being remodeled or opened, my job was to get people so excited about coming to Burger King on the day that it opened. Um, spent a good number of years in the fast food industry. I left and then I ended up with Kinko's way before they got bought by FedEx and, um, and ended up basically spending nine years with Kinko's and uh, helping them open locations and also start their commercial sales uh, force. And um, got to learn a lot about the print to pay market um, and the copy market. And then ended up looking at it like, okay, what was interesting about Kinko's is we did a lot of business with oil and gas um, and oil and gas had like presentations or they had training manuals and all that kind of stuff. And so when I first got into the web business, we started doing, looking at the, almost the same kind of clients and saying, why can't we put your company information, your training manuals and all that kind of stuff online as well. And that's what got me introduced to the website world. No, why am I? So I live with the world of websites that make your phone ring. So we're just gonna talk a little bit about that. So in Texas, a lot of people drive a pickup truck and I look at it like your website is like your company vehicle. 
So you basically pile everything into that truck. I mean, everything about like who you are, uh, that you got certifications, you've been in the business for a long time, you're the best top sales rep for a realtor company, you can help people get over any kind of stress that they're dealing with in their life. Everything that's about you is in this vehicle. And then you go out and you start looking for clients. And you're like, okay, let's take a look at some clients and see what we can do to get some clients. So you're driving down the road. And when I was growing up, you had people who would put up their thumb to um, hitchhike. Now they got these great signs like freshly showered or um, need a ride going to Miami or something like that. So you're just looking for business and you're like, okay, who can help me? So they, you stop, you pull over, you got this vehicle that's almost like your website and you're just packed all good. And they're like, where are you going? The, the person asks that. And the first thing you say is, well, we've been in business since 1973. And they're like, where are you going? Well, we've been certified. We're women owned. We're minority owned. And the guy's like, where are you going? And you just keep talking about yourself and you're talking about your accolades and you're talking about how well your management team is. You're talking about all the products that you do and the fact that it's made in the US. And this guy's like, where are you going? And all they really want to know is where are you driving your vehicle? But you're so interested in talking about everything else that you miss what they're saying. And guess what? They say, I'm had enough of this. They walk to the back of the pickup. They put their thumb up. Your competitor drives up in your big vehicle. And the guy goes, where are you going? He goes, I'm going to Miami. You want to get in? So he gets in. And the reason why this happens is we love talking about ourselves, but people are coming to your website for a purpose. They're not coming just to learn about you. They're coming to see about what you do as a realtor in the, in the upper state of New York. They're coming to you to see what kind of um, building projects you can do. They're coming to see what kind of coaching you offer. And instead of talking about all about you, you want to talk about them. And that's what we're pretty much going to discuss today. So the first thing I tell people when they go, hey, I want a new website or I want a website redesign is begin with the end in mind. What do you want this site to do? And I'm always big on what's the purpose of your website? Because it's real funny how people go, I just want a website because my competitors have one. Or I actually had a meeting with a masonry company that had been in Houston for over 55 years who never had a website. And this was just last week. And I go, why do you want a website now? And he goes, because the people who know us, like the back of their hand, are retiring. And they've had 30 years of buying experience and they're retiring. And the people coming in have maybe three or four years of industry experience, but they're very web savvy. And we don't have a website. So they actually contacted a friend of mine who I'd done a website for. They talked to me and we're like, so what you want is you want a credibility site. You don't really care if you're found on the search engines for Masonry Houston. You want a website that if you put in an RFP um, or you're proposing something and people go to the website, they want to see that you're a real company. And I'm sorry to say, even after 55 years, you do need a website. And so what's the true purpose of the site? And this is where we get specific. And I know there's some people in V5O that handle this kind of stuff. So let's just say I want to increase gym remodels and hotels by 40%. Um, I want to, if it's Bill, I want to book six food photography shoots in the second quarter. I know we've got some realtors here that do Florida and New York. I want to get four new home listings in the first quarter. I want to grow V5O membership by 50%. If that's specifically what you want to do, I want to increase gym remodels and hotels by 40%. Then you build your website to help, help you reach your goal. So I want to book six food photography shoots in the second quarter. If that's what Bill wants to do, then you should go to Bill's website and everything should just almost make you so hungry. You're like, oh, I got to call this guy to shoot my food or get four new home listings in the first quarter. If I go to a website, I need to find out what you're going to do to help me as a seller of homes. Because basically I'm thinking about selling my home and there's thousands and thousands of realtors in the New York state area. What makes you different and what makes you um, help me? And again, you could have a page about buyers, but if you want to get four new home listings, you need to talk to sellers because those are the people who actually are going to do business with you through your site. So straight to your straight, stay true to your purpose. A lot of times people will say, this is specifically what I want to do. And then all of a sudden they start looking at their website going, well, we need this page and we need this page and we need this page. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Your true purpose was to book four home listings in the fir first quarter. 
we're not straying, we're not staying true to that purpose. We're looking at trying to go in a different direction and we're going to miss exactly what the website should do. So what I want to do today was kind of take you through, and this is relevant for any kind of industry, but the name upstream came from the fact that I do a lot of work in the oil and gas industry in Houston. Upstream is anything that comes out of the ground. Downstream is anything that's like chemical or um, manufactured like a, like a chemical product. And then midstream is the transportation of the, of the oil and gas, like it would be for like pipeline or trucking. So this is a guy, this is a company who does um, subsea pipeline. So basically if you have a pipeline underground, underwater, you would use these pieces of equipment to um, connect everything. So it's a startup company. I know them from the fact that a lot of them worked for a previous company that I worked with. So we took a look at their website and we said, and they compete with people that are anywhere from five to 10 to 20 times bigger than they are. So we said, what can we do differently than your major competitors? And we said, okay, let's take a look at the site. So when you come to the, when you come to the site, here's what we call the top navigation. So here's the logo, here's their phone number, and here's their email address. There are people who will be coming to your site that they can't remember your phone number and they just want your phone number. So if you were to pull this site up in a mobile, this would be click to call. So all I have to do is click that phone number and call it or click this email address and send them an email. So what you wanna do with your own website is pull it up on your phone because a lot of designers will make this a, um, an image and Google can't read images. So Google can't read the phone number. So when you try to click on it, because Google can't read it, it doesn't know that it's an actual phone number. So this is actually what's called text. Um, this is not an image, this is text. So that Google reads the text, I can click the call, I can click the email. So when you look at this website, you're like, pretty simple, home, about us, products, request a quote. But what we did differently than the competitors was we said, if you're a buyer engineer looking for subsleep pipeline, there's two different uh, areas of information. There's shallow water, which means basically you could put this down there with a diving crew. And then there's deep water, which means you have to use an ROV uh, to, to uh, install it. So what we said was, okay, we have products for both. So let's go ahead and break it out. So the first thing you see here is shallow water and deep water. So are you looking for shallow water or deep water? You could do this the same way if you were saying, are you buying a home or selling a home? Are you looking for coaching for your company or for or your CEO? You know, anything that you're looking for, do you have IT problems or are you looking for X? You could break up your website just as, as they did. But what we said was, okay, let's say we're interested in shallow water. So the next thing you would do is when you clicked on shallow water, you would come up with what we call a shallow water landing page. And this is where, instead of having a drop down that just went forever, the landing page is especially good for mobile because sometimes your, your menus do not work exactly the same when it comes to a mobile device. So what we said was, okay, you came to the homepage, you said, I want shallow water. You go to a shallow water landing page and there's six products that relate to you. And if you're fairly new to the industry or whatever, you could just say, well, I think that's what I want. I want a Titan. So basically you're like, okay, I want that. So you go, you click on that and you go to a page that actually is the product page. So here's the full product page that gives you all the information. And basically it's strategically designed to help the technical buyer and the non-technical buyer. So you may have in your business, you may have an educated buyer who's actually sold maybe two or three homes before or has done a food shop before and they know what they're looking for. And then you have the person who, this is the first home they've ever sold because financially or a family member or something, they're not interested in the home anymore. Or, hey, somebody said, I'm not doing my job exactly right. Maybe I do need some counseling or some training or some coaching. So you will have people come to the site that may not know what you do and you need to address them as well. So what you're looking at for them is, okay, let's build the site. So what we did was, this is the product page that you just saw recently, but everything is strategically here for a reason. So here's the content that talks about the mechanical end connector. Here's a product photo of the connector, but it also shows some of the other products that go along with the connector. Here's a great product photo, and it's actually strapped down like it's gonna be just shipped. Um, so it has kind of a call to action, which means not only can we make it, but we can ship it to you as well. For the engineers, there's a rendering here that you can, you can enlarge to see more of the detailed information. There's also product information, which means if there's a brochure, the information is downloadable in an easy PDF, and the call to action is request a quote. So 
everything is on here for a specific purpose in the fact that this is what we call usually above the fold, which is the first thing they're going to see is this information. So if they said, hey, I just want to download a brochure on this, they can. They want to request a quote. This opens up a quote. But basically, everything was strategically set up on this so that if I'm a buyer or if I'm an engineer, I can get the information that I want. And this is exactly what you can do on your site for a buy or sell type page is everything is on here for a purpose. If you have a CEO who says, well, we did this and we need this, you go, I'm sorry, but we wanted to increase sales of our shallow water products. So the only thing that should be on this page is helping accomplish the goal that we set originally, which was the purpose of the site. So the next thing you look at is after this, you go, okay, how about we go to the next page? Well, part of the section of the page is a spool repair diagram. So basically it simply tells you, if you're near to the industry, these are the connectors that tighten cells. And when you have a damage in your pipeline, you, you cap it, cut it, put the connectors in, put a new piece in. So it's just kind of show you a little bit more about how you use the product. So again, if you have an engineer that's coming that's relatively new to the industry, if you have a buyer that's coming that's relatively new, they can get a little bit more information about how this product is used. If you have very educated people coming to your site, you may not need this, but it's not like it's a video. It's not like it's a high-end $30,000 rendering. This is pretty easy to set up and it made people understand exactly how you use the Titan product. Then we're like, okay, let's show them some pictures. People love photos. So here are, here's the owner of Titan. Here's the, the um, pieces of steel being done. It's kind of like a transition. Here's it getting painted. Here's, here's the end product. So we put photos that people would be interested in looking at because of the cycle of how it's built or just because it's really cool. Now, one of the things, because of the fact that they deal with multinational international companies, we looked at every photo and looked at the safety um, issues. Were there any safety issues in this product? So when you look at products, uh, when you look at photos that you're taking with your phone, and it's not a problem, you can take photos with a phone because nowadays your Apple um, iPhone 13 or 14 is just like a professional camera. Um, so you can do some pretty cool stuff. I'm sorry, I don't have one of the uh, Google phones where you can remove the background and do some crazy stuff with your pictures yet. But what you're looking at is, are these photos interested to the people who might do business with me? And is there any photo that has a guy who should be wearing a hard hat or not that might actually tell people not do business with me? Because especially in today's world, the last thing they want to do is have any safety issues. So especially for my industrial clients, we look at every product to make sure there's not a safety issue in there. Companies like BP, British Petroleum and all that, will not do business with a company that has photos on their website that showcase um, unsecure or safety issues. So you just want to be, um, you want to be up to, to date with that. So the last thing, which subconsciously you probably didn't even see on that, is the footer. Um, and there's a footer on every page because at the footer, there's the contact information on how to get a hold of Titan. There's a little bit about who Titan is, product catalog, company brochure, and there's a little contact form. Now, why would we put information about who Titan is? Okay, so if we set this website up for SEO, which is search engine optimization, you might actually Google mechanical end connector or shallow water mechanical end connector, and you might be taken directly to this page. If you're taken directly to this page, it means you skip the home page and the about page. So you may not know who Titan is. You may just come to this page because you're looking for a shallow water mechanical end connector. So what we're giving you is we're giving you the information that's on the contact page. We're giving you information that's on the about page. And we're giving you a pretty easy contact form to use because guess what? I don't want you going anywhere else on my site if all you're interested in is purchasing a mechanical end connector. So if you had a website that talked about your home listings, um, you can embed the listing so they come up in your site. So you don't have to go to like, in Houston, we have HAR, which is our, our national, our MLS database or something like that. So basically anything that you want, you want to inform your people, because guess what? I don't want to go into any other page. I don't want to go into the contact page. I don't want to go into the about page. I want them staying on the page they found until they're ready to do business with me. So if you're, if you're a pool builder, you have all the information about your pool services on one page, your testimonials and everything. And then people make a decision about doing this with you from that one page without going anywhere else. And that's the new way of doing websites. Everything that's relevant, brochures, contact information, photos, 
testimonials, everything is on one page. You don't have to go anywhere else before you can decide to do business with my client. And because it's industrial, and I know there's not everybody sitting in here industrial, you can do the same thing for any kind of site. I just recently did a website for a beauty salon. Here is a little bit about who they are. Here's the services. Choose a service or choose your bliss, as she calls it. Here's a little bit about their team. Here's a little bit about the testimonials and who loves them. Informative blog articles about the benefits of getting a facial. Um, contact information. Uh, click this on your cell phone. It'll take you directly to Google Maps and show you how to get there. So just exactly like we were talking about with Titan, you can do it with beauty. You can do it with an industry that's very different. I mean, this is environmental. So if you bought a piece of land and you wanted a company to come see if there was anything buried underneath the land or if there's any issues with the land, you'd hire a company like this. Most of their most of their web pages are pretty boring, uh, but we did an environmental consulting company where here's the industries, here's our top services, here's the latest news, here's a featured project that you want to talk about. And then they have um, four locations in the in the Texas area. So this is an interactive map that you can click. So again, all we're trying to do really is give people the information that they want. Burton Sausage, as you know, them, if you hang around V50, you know I'm kind of like the sausage king when it comes to design. I've won some national awards for my websites that are sausage related. Uh, this is Burton, ingredients you can pronounce. So this is kind of like the, the healthy version of sausage, if you could say that. But all of these are either food photography shots that we hired, stock photos, or images that my guys came up with. And again, what this does is it continues the branding of the current packaging they did. But you can tell from the fact that we did a beauty spa, we did Burton Sausage, and we did um, Titan, none of those sites look the same. We are different in the fact that everything is customized, designed for you and for your clients you want to reach. And then we put what we call the WordPress backend. So we don't go, go buy a pre-made theme. We don't look at it and say, okay, you're real estate. Can we go buy a real estate theme or a real estate uh, kit and just put you in it? We build a custom site specifically for you and your clients. And so this is the different one for Burton. Um, so here's a couple of things that we want to talk about. Your customer has a specific need. They're looking for food photography. They're looking for IT services. They're looking for coaching. Directly adjust those needs on your website because the rest of it is just noise. It's getting in the way of people doing business with you. Um, if you're an IT company, talk about, are you open? To, are you, do you have 24 hour service? Um, is there special things that you do? Do you have a ticket system where you have to get in a ticket? How do, how do you do business with you and make it easy? Um, so your customers have a specific need and make sure your website addresses that. Um, don't target everyone. This is not a shotgun approach, even though it is the web. Um, it's more of a, a strategic, for me, it's more of a, a sniper type um, strategy. Um, yes, we're designing the website for your best customers. And those are the people that we would hope that would do business with us. And if you're not my best customer, but you still want to do business with me, um, you'll find that my information is very uh, understandable and easy to use. So you do want to target who you, you know, if you have a customer profile of who you like to do business with, Let's talk about that and build a site for that. So I'm going to show you real quick a couple of examples again. This is Montgomery Self Storage. They are a self storage rental company. Um, this is their location page. What we built this for was first time renters. <clears throat> there are a lot of people out there who had never thought about renting storage, but ran out of space in their home or their apartment. We also found out that women uh, make the decision to get a storage unit first. Um, so we show them the different units that are available. This is a five by five. This is a 10 by 10. We have a graphic here that shows you what kind of stuff you can store in it. We have here, if you're interested in a, you know, more information on it, these are photos of the property with the manager so that you can see exactly who you're going to be talking to when you go by the location. These are testimonials from the clients. This is the fact that we are in a small town. So this is the chamber and the fact that they got ranked um, by a newspaper as one of the best um, self-storage rental places. And then there's a map. There's contact information and a little bit about the property because what separates them is they have paved roads, they have security cameras, their units are very clean and, and user and friendly. They have property managers on site. So what we found was building pages like this not only help reach the women who are interested in stealth storage, but Google also loves the fact that we have a we have location pages for each location. So if you have multiple locations of a business, Google wants you to put 
the city that that particular location is in versus having a location page that has all seven. So we're not only trying to reach the first time renter, we're also trying to make Google happy. So you want a clear call to action. What do you want people to do when they're when they're finished looking at your site or working with you? Do you want them to call you, email you, buy something? You know, I've done I'm an author, so I've done some author websites. Is it, hey, do you want people to buy the book and give them a link to Amazon, give them a look to uh, um, Barnes and Noble, or give them a link if you want to do an autographed copy of the book and you sell it yourself online? Clements Fence Company, real quick. You'll notice that on this one, we really wanted to do something where, okay, so right, like tighten the phone numbers in the upper right hand corner. Um, there's a contact here. Uh, so basically, if you're interested in um, chain link fence or commercial fencing, you can fill out this little uh, quick form really quickly. Here's a lot of photos that they've done. Here's a testimonial. And again, like Titan, here's a footer uh, about who they are. And let's talk. You will be amazed at how many, even though if you had this big quote form like, like Clemens has, how many people on this raw arm page will fill out this three or four uh, field thing because they're on that page and they don't want to leave the page. So on the bottom, they'll fill it out and say, yeah, I'm interested in talking to somebody about my commercial raw arm fencing needs. Can you please contact me? They'll fill this out before they go to a request a quote or they'll fill this one out right here. Again, this is only five fields. If, you're, if your contact form has like almost like step one, step two, step three, step four, it'll be better be worth it or people are not gonna fill it out. Get All you want to do with the website, unless it's an e-commerce site, is get them to fill out the form and then get on the phone and call them. Because guess what? Three things happen when you fill out a form and we're all experienced with this. One is nothing. Nobody ever contacts me back. I don't even know why I took the time to fill it out. Two, nobody contacts me back, but all of a sudden I start getting a newsletter that I did not want. Um, and I start getting your emails, but I never got it back. Or two, somebody actually contacted me back and said, I saw you fill out a form. How can I help you? I guarantee you most of your customer, most of your competitors are probably in the first or second category and have never contacted someone back. You fill out a form on my website about a website redesign. It goes to a special email that pings me. Um, and there are people who have actually been on my site uh, that I called and said, I saw you fill out a contact form. Because guess what? That is gravy. You want to fill out a, a good lead for me and it's not spam or some Russian thing or some German thing I can't read and it's just spam. You fill out a really good um, you know, request a quote for me. I'll call you back in a meeting, in a, in a minute. I mean, because that's gold for me. So here's a, another one that we did like with Clements. So create a career path for them to take. What do you want them to do before they leave the site? Um, confusion will lose them. You confuse site. You put some pretty cool things like I had somebody who wanted to name the contact page. I don't know. It was something like, how can we help you? And I'm like, people are not going to go to that page. They want to go to contact. They want to go to about. They want to go to product services. They're so used to it. Don't give them something where they have to think. Um, so these are a couple of tips. I've been talking for about 30 minutes real quick. So these are some tips you want to write down because these are going to help you. First one is testimonial pages are no longer valid. Okay, people don't want to go to a testimonial page and see all about the raving reviews because guess what? It's your website, so I guarantee you're not going to have any bad reviews. So people look at it and go, testimonial? Nah. But let's say, like I just did a website for a company that does apparel printing and uh, like screen printing. So it says, what are apparel customers say about us? They also do vehicle graphics. This page is about vehicle graphics. It has testimonials about vehicle graphics. It does not have testimonials out of apparel unless the company said, hey, we not only got our vehicles wrapped, we got our t-shirts printed. But one of the big things is if you have testimonials about people who have used you for IT, for coaching and all that, and they'll give you the testimonial, put that testimonial on that specific page that the testimonial relates to, and the testimonial will have a lot more weight than just on a testimonial page, which nobody's going to anymore. Um, so this is right on the homepage for a guy who does custom boat upholstery. We trusted my boat with, we wouldn't trust my boat with just anyone. BB Custom Upholstery did a fantastic job. I highly recommend them for any lake boat, O'Connor boat owners. We asked the guy to basically say, boat, upholstery, Lake Conroe boat owners. Because guess what? Google's going to read this testimonial and might rank it. So we're going to ask for some of the keywords that the guy who's given the testimonial is like, yeah, whatever, you're, you're great. We'll do this for you. Um, so the second thing we're really going to talk about real quick is the footer. If your website has nothing at the bottom, 
but your copyright date, that's the last thing people are seeing. So when you take your phone after this meeting and you go all the way down to the bottom of your website, what is there? Can I contact you from the bottom of the website without having to scroll back up? Because nobody wants to scroll anymore. And you know who's really good at this now is Google because it used to be page two, three, four, five, six. Go to Google and do a search and then scroll. You're scrolling through page two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, 10, because Google wants you to not have to go back up. So think about it for you when you're on your website and you're thinking about, and you're on the sales page because you sell homes. What's the last thing people see at the bottom of your site? Your copyright date? Or do they see your contact information to be able to do business with you? And this is one of the things that has really helped my clients. So do you have a footer on your site that gives people the information on every page? Uh, make it easy for people to do business with you. That's the thing I've been stressing a lot right now. Um, I'm coming out with book two sometime. <laughs> right now it's 99 cents for Kindle on um, Amazon. It's called 52 Tips to Turn Your Website into a Sales Machine. I was reading the book actually this morning and I think about 48 of them are still really valid. Um, it's very simple. It's why do you not underline online you know, to make something emphasized because people think if you underline it, that it's a link. Um, so it's some of the most simple things, but you look at your website, you don't think about it until all of a sudden you're like, why are people clicking on something and getting frustrated? Because you underlined it or you put it in blue, which looks like a link. Um, I've probably done $3,400 in book sales with Amazon. I'm um, almost a million dollars in book business because the book gave me so much credibility. And I know there's other people in B5O that written books. And I can tell you that that's exactly what you want to do. Is If you're in an industry that's very competitive, this book helped me um, five years ago really separate myself from, from other people in the industry. I would be glad to take any questions now. So let's stop sharing. I hope that was informative for you. Um, I wanted to break out what we did for Titan and some of the other people so you would see exactly what we did. So it's not just a bunch of like quotes and, and stuff. So let's see what we got here. Oh, All, right. All right, let's see what we got. All right, let's see. Let's see, what we, okay, we got. Uh, right. Any, any, I see a lot of websites that wanna be reviewed. Any questions real quick, anybody have? And then we'll, and then we'll hit the reviews. I had a question. <laughs> yeah. This is more about website and what you said, I think is very clear, um, very simple, you know, um, so that's helpful, um, especially for someone who does planning. Uh, I guess you just need a refresher on, you know, um, basis, basis, basic designs and um, uh, how you navigate. Um, so anyway, um, I'm working with Squarespace. So the whole point of the website was just to get it up there and not be incorrect. So I, I achieved that, but now I want to add content and stuff like that. And I'm having a hard time with Squarespace itself. Is there one that you would recommend? If that's easier. If you really, if you really want to grow, um, I would look at, I would look at getting out of the template environment of the Wix, Squarespace, Weebly, GoDaddy. I would look at either contacting me or another person who designs in, in WordPress, who could build you a site that you could update yourself. All the photos that you saw on Clement's fence that were related to fence, every, every time they have a great project, they take a picture with their phone and they can go in the next day and upload them to their site. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't have like, the, I don't have like the, the golden wand that means everybody has to use me once, they're, once the site's finished. I want you to be able to update it. I, if you really want to get into a really great site that you can manage, I would get out of the template environment because you're going to be limited. Got it. Um, so I would look at I would look at somebody building you like a WordPress site that you could manage yourself, and that's the first thing you would talk about is, hey, I want to do I want I don't want to be reliant on you, you know I don't want to have to give you my updates, and then you know a week later I want to be able to update my buildings myself, and somebody will build the site for you on that way because that's the first question I ask my clients, are you going to be able to update the site yourself? Do you want to? And they're like yes, and then half of them are like I don't have the time, Brian. Can you do that? And we do offer website management and update pro, but I would. Yeah, I would, Stephen, I would really look at leaving the template environment and getting more of a custom site that you can update yourself. Cool. But good question on that. Thank because you. you are going to be limited because I have a client, who, I had a client before who had a 50 page Wix site and the thing would like not load. And I'm like, yeah, because yeah. Wix doesn't think you're ever going to have 50 pages. Is it all videos? Like five or six. <laughs> so, yeah. so all right, let's see what we get. Yeah, 
I see a hand up. What's going on, Hi. Katrina? Hi, Brian. That was great. I really appreciate your presentation. There's a lot of valuable information in there. Um, Stephen, I just wanted to add, I use WordPress, but I use the theme. Um, but WordPress is super <laughs> easy to um, update and do all the things that you need to. So my question is, do pages matter? Do the number of pages that you have matter and the kind of pages? So if they're like blog articles or things like that. Um, it used to be. Um, what's really now is Google wants to see you as an authority. So the reason why we did something like with Titan, we put all the information about mechanical end connector and the photos and, and optimize and alt tag the photos so that they related to the page. Google wants to see good content. Um, and that means a page that has everything from photos and testimonials and, and that kind of stuff. So you don't need as many pages anymore. Um, like I just did a small website for a, a broker and it was basically five pages and he goes, how am I going to rank? And I go, you're not with the five pages, but you are with a blog. Um, so like with the med spa, her site is two pages, but then she has a blog that talks about very strategically. She talks about the benefits of a, um, of a facial, um, what's involved with a chemical peel. How long does a chemical peel take to heal and all that kind of stuff? Because those are the questions that people are asking for her services. So we made a very simple four page site, but then we use the blog strategically to, to answer the questions that people are asking. So what you could do, Katrina, is you could have, you could have, you know, you could have pages about your um, coaching services, and then you could have a blog that addresses like right now, if people are coming off the holidays and they're a little bit still depressed or if they're good, you could, you can answer a lot of the questions um, through the blog. The only thing you have to worry about for if you're a financial advisor and stuff like that is your um is it if you have a um, compliance department or something like that but and you don't want to give away all your secrets but yeah it doesn't matter as much as the pages as well as how much the con is the content relevant to what people are looking for but, I mean, but Brian, like every site, every every new blog will be a new page yes it will yeah yep and you want anywhere from you want at least 500 words because Google wants 500 words on a page or 500 words on a blog. And then you can go up to 1,000, 1,500. I wouldn't go over that because you have to realize two things. One, Google's never going to give you money, but Google will bring you traffic. And then the real live person needs to read the blog and decide if they're going to do business with you because of the blog or they want to go through the rest of the site. And bullets are really good because nobody reads all the articles on, on a blog. They'll scan it and look for information. So bullets are really good. Also internal links that if you talk about a specific thing and then you go, oh yeah, by the way, we do offer chain link fence, you know, how to clean chain link fence. We do offer chain link fence and you have an internal link. What you don't want is you don't want the blog to be a total sales um, tool for you. You want to be informative. And Google knows that too. Google's looking for, is the, is the website informative and does it give the information that I need or is it a total scam and all you're trying to do is sell people? Brian, okay. quick question on that space. Yeah. How when is when is a blog too old? Um, actually, it's really not because Google will still rank it. What you could do though is you can like I did a blog on Twitter, and now Twitter's kind of chased a lot. So I actually went in and re re uh, purpose the blog. And what I did is, if you're in WordPress, you can change the date as to when the blog was um, posted. Um, so now it looks like a recent date. That's another tip that I kind of like is. I don't date my blogs. Um, mm. I only put them in order of when they were written because I don't like one year, I think it was 2019. I wrote a blog, almost a blog a week. 2020 came, I wrote one a month. 2021 came, I wrote six. I was pretty bad about it, but guess what? My date, my dates are not on there. People don't know if I wrote a hundred last week or if I wrote six, um, unless I say something like tax, you know, tax savings for 2019. That's still going to be there. <laughs> which is a little dated, but you don't want to get rid of those pages because Google looks as an authority that, hey, back in 2019, you were ranked pretty high for that blog. Keep it. You could just do a new one. And just if somebody finds it and says, hey, I'm interested in 2019, then just say, hey, if you read this blog, things have changed. Go to my new blog that talks about 2023. So yeah, you could definitely do some stuff like that. Okay, and what's interesting you. is, and here's a little trick for you. Um, you can write tips that Google likes. And the holy grail of search is to, is to be the website that answers the question that Google has. So basically people, 
I have a client who's a technical writing company. They do, they do tips on grammar. The number one tip that they get almost 3,500 people a month to their site is, how do you punctuate the word in depth? Is it I-N-D-E-P-T-H or is it I-N pop dash D-E-P-T-H? You wouldn't realize the number of people who ask that question. If you ask that question, you'll see that shaws.com answers the question for you. So people click on it. Now, converting people who are looking for an answer to a customer, maybe one or 2%, but we had to add because it was so popular at the bottom of the page, it says, we are glad to answer this grammar question for you. If we can help you with your corporate documents or technical writing, please give us a call or contact us because the bog has so much um, weight to it. Uh, you can also, if you're in a local area, um, like I have Montgomery Self Storage, which you saw is in the Conroe area. We contact the Chamber of Commerce. We contact a lot of people and we put out Halloween uh, events 2022. Because guess what? There's a lot of families who rent self-storage rental places. So we'll have all about families. And we talk about families. We talk about all the family activities. If you Google Halloween events 2022 Conroe, our blog comes up number one over the Chamber of Commerce and everything else. So does the blog that we wrote in 2021, 2020, and 2019. So now we had to like go, okay, these are 2019 events. Please go to our most recent blog. But it's amazing what you can do. You still have to write about what you do for a company, but it's amazing what you can do to answer questions and get people to your blog. Authentic uh, Authentication is really what Google wants. And so it's like, hey, you want to know all the events that are going on for Halloween? Montgomery Self Storage has got them listed for you in a blog. So it's unique ways of using your blog to answer questions. And there's actually, you can Google the top questions that people ask about blank. And you can get some of those questions. And also, I think there's called public questions or something like that. There's a there's a site that you can go and it'll give you like 40 questions about one product that you put in. So you you can we could write blogs all day based off the questions that people have. Brian, how often should we update <clears throat> our regular part of our website, not just the blogs, but the home page, the about page, that kind of thing? Um, if anything becomes dated or changed it's 2023 so i have a lot of clients that are looking at the information and the last thing you want is and this happens because like i just said a website that hadn't been touched in 2008 um and the business had changed so much that i don't even think the site was relevant so the last thing you want you don't want is you don't want the site to become irrelevant to who you are mm -hmm. so if one of your services change or you all of a sudden offer something new and that's the big thing is make sure that if if you don't have the capabilities updating your site, whoever is you're working with is responsive. Because if you send in updates to us, within 24 to 48 hours, those updates are done um, because we want the site to be living and breathing. But there's some that have some kind of like ticket system and it might take two months. You want to have access to your site. You don't want the thing to ever become outdated. And the biggest thing now is just being able to update either the blog. So I would say if it's relevant, update it. Because Google's going to see that you're updating it. They're they're their, their spiders, as they call them, will index the site and see that, oh, something's changed on this page or this page is new. If they index it and nothing's changed and you don't have a blog and they index it again and nothing's changed and they index it again and all of a sudden you're like, well, maybe we won't be coming back to index this again anytime soon. So you want some kind of content to change or photos and all that. And that's where you kind of get that information um, is if it's relevant for the people who I'm, people I want to do business with me, then put it on the site. I don't, I don't change my pages on my upstreammarketing.net site very often, but I do blog. Um, and I blog like once a month now, and I've got a thing for 2023 where I want to blog at least twice a month. Um, so I'm going to sit down on a weekend and write like six or seven blogs, put them in there, and then have them come out like on the second and then have them come out on the 20th. You can actually in WordPress um, set it up where they'll automatically launch on a specific date. So how do okay. you do that? Do what? <laughs> how do you how do you set them up so that they'll come out on a specific date? In the uh, in the publish section, you can put the the future date. Like if you just hit OK, it'll tell you that it was uh, January 11th at two twelve fifty p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time or whatever like that. You just set the date however you want it, and set the date okay. like for three weeks at two o'clock in the afternoon, and it'll launch it. Uh, Beautiful. Three weeks in the afternoon. Thank you. So I hope that helps today. Very much yeah. so. Thank yeah. you. Very Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Great presentation. Yeah. Thank Very you. practical.